Within the last few years, SpaceX has become one of the leaders in space exploration. The most recent news was that the company was picked by NASA to build the human lunar lander. This was an honor as it would have been the first lunar lander since the Apollo program. However, it's just been announced that NASA has suspended work on the almost $3 billion lander. A NASA spokeswoman said the following, Pursuant to the GAO protests, NASA instructed SpaceX that progress on the contract has been suspended until GAO resolves all outstanding litigation related to this procurement. End quote. SpaceX, though, has a busy year ahead of them in terms of launches and are still working on the human Mars mission. Elon said the following, You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great, and that's what being a space frame civilization is all about. It's about believing in the future, and thinking that the future will be better than the past, and I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. End quote. Right now though, there's a group of people that are asking Elon to go to the moon and investigate a mysterious anomaly, saying that whatever this thing is, it needs to be investigated as it looks like a giant ship. The individual who found this craft is Scott C. Waring, a vocal UFO researcher who's claimed he's found various UFOs and ships in space. Although NASA have replied to some of these claims and debunked them as camera anomalies and other occurrences that happen in space, Regardless, Mr. Waring believes this large craft is the real deal, and even said the first space company to reach this could potentially uncover advanced tech. He said the following about the discovery. When looking over the Apollo 15 panoramic images, I came across a photo that has a mothership in it. It's not a cloud. Clouds do not exist on the moon. So I enlarged the photo and saw that not only was it a ship, it looks very similar to the Starship Voyager from Star Trek. End quote. He goes on to claim that the ship in question measures over 10.6 kilometers, or 6.5 miles. Amateur researchers have come forward in recent years and claim they found similar looking objects in old photographs, and they say this proves that there's more going on than what we're being told about. And in some cases, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is even editing out these images in the hopes that we won't see them. Amateur researchers say they do this because they think if the majority of the population found out about these things, they would just panic. Recently, he, along with other researchers, have asked Elon to consider checking out the location, saying that this could be the discovery of a lifetime and could help us to answer the old age question of whether we're truly alone in the universe. This isn't the first time that someone has asked this from Elon. With all of the recent SpaceX launches, some watchers have claimed they've seen UFOs close to the rockets, saying that whatever these things are, they're clearly interested in our tank, as every time we send a rocket into space, these unidentified flying objects can be seen buzzing the crafts. However, these people may be preaching to the wrong person, as in the past Elon has been quite vocal about the fact that he's never seen any evidence to suggest that UFOs are genuine. He did say it's likely that consciousness might exist in the vastness of space, but also said if there were UFOs out there, he would know about them. Going on to say the following, I've seen nothing to indicate there are any alien civilizations whatsoever, I'd be the first to jump on that in a second, but I've seen no such evidence. End quote. He also went on to criticize UFO photographs, saying that the majority of them are blurry and you can't make out what the object is. Some people hit back at this though, and said that the majority of eyewitnesses aren't expecting to see them, which causes the photos to be blurry. Also, as mentioned by photographers and eyewitnesses, they've said that it's incredibly hard to take a photograph of a UFO on an everyday smartphone, saying that they're not designed to take photographs of fast-moving objects hundreds of feet in the sky. Believers have said it's one of the most frustrating things that people say when talking about UFOs, as until what happens to you, you don't understand how hard it is to photograph a UFO. 
For years now, UFO researchers have said the moon is a hotspot for UFOs, even going as far as saying it's one of the best places to see mysterious crafts. This has led to amateur researchers coming through NASA's huge library in the hopes of finding something of interest. One photograph that did stump NASA was this one. It's been called the break-off, and it shows what looks like a large object hovering close to the moon. Some have said it could be a chunk of the moon that came off, but UFO believers have said it looks like an unidentified flying object. Oddly enough, in the next photo that was taken by the space agency, the object can no longer be seen. The photograph is still in NASA's archives, and various newspapers reached out to the space agency in the hopes of getting an answer for what this object is. NASA spokeswoman Lynette Madison said that people are too quick to label things as UFOs, but said that the photograph is strange, and that, as of right now, they can't explain what it is. Scientists have just announced that they may have finally made a complete digital model for the mysterious Antikythera mechanism, which is hailed by many researchers as being the world's first computer. Although scientists have known about this device for years, they were never able to replicate the mechanism, answer certain questions about how it was used or what drove the device, and couldn't really reveal much about how it was created. But researchers based at the University of London have said they've finally been able to fully recreate the design. Retrieved from a shipwreck back in May of 1902 off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera, after which the machine has been named after, the Antikythera mechanism has put historians and archaeologists in a tight spot. After engineers analysed the machine and realised what it was designed for and its overall purpose, the mechanism itself appears to be an early type of analog computer, and was built to be so precise and accurate that it could predict astronomical positions. Eclipses, the four-year cycle of the athletic games, the cycle of the ancient Olympic games and other important events decades in advance. After intensive carbon dating, it was found that the Antikythera machine was created by Greek scientists between 150 and 100 BC, eons ahead of previously known knowledge about the extensive intelligence and craftsmanship of the ancient Greek civilization. This meant that the device seemed to have held advanced information that archaeologists, historians and other experts did not believe existed for another few centuries. Many have begun to speculate that perhaps our early ancestors were far more capable than we may have ever realised, and that perhaps their technology was much more advanced than we could have ever have known. This has only worked to challenge modern theories of ancient civilizations, and has led some theorists to believe that perhaps there were more analog computer devices around the same time. Although many treasures had been excavated from the seafloor during an expedition in 1976, Underwater explorers who conducted the more recent expedition noticed several features around the site that might indicate that even more treasures still remained buried out of sight, that lead explorers to continue to excavate and test the sites, and this was worth doing as their suspicions and patience paid off. First wooden hull remains along with large bronze nails and spikes that were used in construction of the hull began to be uncovered. The researchers at the University of London have said they're going to put their creation to their test, and see if the copy design works. One of the researchers who worked on the project said the following, Our work reveals the Antikythera mechanism as a beautiful conception, translated by superb engineering into a device of genius. It challenges all our preconceptions about the technological capabilities of the ancient Greeks. End quote. The main reason for the researchers recreating the device is because there's still many unanswered questions, with them saying it just goes to show how ahead this is, because it's taken them a long time to get to this point, and yet we still have many questions. Another researcher said the following, The distance between this device's complexity and others made at the same time is infinite. Frankly, there's nothing like it that's ever been found. It's out of this world. What is it doing on that ship? We only found one third. Where are the other two thirds? Have they corroded away? 
did it ever work? These are questions that we can only really answer through experimental archaeology. It's like answering how they built Stonehenge. Let's get 200 people with some rope and a big stone and try to pull it across Salisbury Plain. That's a bit like what we're trying to do. There's no evidence that the ancient Greeks were able to build something like this. It really is a mystery. The only way to test if they could is try to build it the ancient Greek way. And there's also a lot of debate about who it was for and who built it. A lot of people say it was Archimedes. He lived around the same time it was constructed. And no one else had the same level of engineering ability that he did. It was also a Roman shipwreck. Archimedes was taken out by Romans. End quote. Although researchers are closer to recreating this incredible device, we are still no closer to understanding how they built it. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that Archimedes' name has popped up when talking about advanced creations. One of his best inventions was the mythical heat ray that was used by Archimedes to fight back an entire army. According to the legend, back in 212 BC, Inventor and philosopher Archimedes was at the shore of a massive siege between his own people and a number of Roman warships during the siege of Syracuse. Made entirely aware that his people were both outnumbered and outmatched, Archimedes began constructing what was referred to as a burning glass that would be able to burn the Roman warships and protect his people. A number of the legends and different variations exist that claims he used one large mirror to reflect the direct sunlight, whereas others claim he used the shields of 70 soldiers to redirect the light of the warships to catch them on fire. This legend has often been challenged by a number of researchers, claiming that such a story is completely fabricated, and that the physics of the encounter doesn't seem to add up. This led to the TV show Mythbusters attempting to recreate the event, only to find that they were unable to ignite a model ship. Regardless of these finds, many still believe the event had occurred at one time, given the fact that the legend has been recorded by both Greek and Roman historians, and after discoveries such as the Antikythera mechanism, it does make you question how many other inventions have been lost to time. So what do you make of the Antikythera mechanism? And how was an ancient civilization able to build such a complex device? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.